Hello there and welcome to this first video in which we'll take a look at a broad overview of some of the topics related to living on land. So we won't be going into detail in this video, this is just context. But that context is that um, terrestrial ecosystems have been occupied throughout much of, but not all of, the last 542 million years since the Cambrian explosion. The shape and patterns of change of life on land are similar to those that we see in the marine biosphere, so similar to those that we see in the oceans, but they're not always synchronous. They don't always occur at the same time. Uh, we have a much smaller fossil record of life on land than we do of marine um, faunas, and that's because we have fewer rock deposits recording terrestrial, so land-based ecosystems through time. Um, much paleontology as a result focuses on aquatic rather than terrestrial organisms. We do know that complex terrestrial ecosystems appeared more than 200 million years later than the first varied metazoan marine communities. We don't really know why this is. We don't know if it was, a, for example, a lack of fresh water to allow um, creatures a, a path onto land, or and we don't know the, the drivings, the selective forces behind the move onto land, like it could have been to avoid predation. We, we um, don't have a clear picture of many of the handles on this yet. What we do know is that plants migrated onto land first, followed by creepy crawlies, arthropods, and then vertebrates more recently. The typical trophic structure of a modern kind of terrestrial land-based ecosystem had probably developed by um, the Permian, so at some point before 250 million years ago. And then the time since that has been characterized by shifts in vegetational structure, developments in herbivory, and fine tuning of plant and animal interactions. And that's all of the kind of the, the, the events, the timeline that we're going to cover today. For our purposes, the, um, the, uh, the basic definition of terrestrial, which is related to or living or growing in or on land, is a good start. That's the definition I've put on the uh, top here. However, I, I choose to follow more closely and highlight uh, a definition by Wellman and Strother in 2015 here, which says that we consider terrestrial environments to be anything that is non-marine. So that includes not only dry land surface, bedrock and soils, but also things like swamps and bogs and aquatic standing and running freshwater. So within this context, um, thinking about life on land um, in the fossil record is useful to think of fresh water as being uh, a land ecosystem as well. So why, why is this important? Why should we be learning this? Well, based on the reference by Grosberg et al. 2012 that I put on this slide, um, 1.5 million species of macroscopic organisms, um, roughly, um, currently have been described on Earth. The modern ocean supports only 15% of those species, despite its larger area and volume. Of terrestrial environments, um, land-based environments account for 80% of the remaining species and freshwater ones uh, account for the remaining 5%. So actually, when it comes to um, terrestrial environments, we're talking about at least 85% of species diversity based on these estimates. So an obvious question is, why is this the case? Why is life on land so diverse? Well, we don't know for sure, but if you remember niches from our ecological, uh, from our ecological, from our paleoecology video, I put this slide on just to remind you of what they are. You can see the definition there, but I'm not going to rehearse it. Um, if you don't remember, you may want to go back and watch that video again. Uh, but what, the reason I'm mentioning this is that there are lots of niches on land. Land is a very varied environment, which is fragmented and it has a wide range of different conditions. As such, we, um, this could be driving species diversity on land. We don't know for sure, um, but that is one possible explanation for the diversity of organisms on land. So how are we going to cover this tremendous diversity? Well, the answer is that I'm afraid we're not going to cover all of it because we don't have all the time in the world. Um, it was a struggle to keep this lecture to a decent length because this, this is something upon which I do research and so I had to fight really hard to get, try and keep it short and to the point. Rather, we're just going to be looking at some um, particular eukaryote terrestrial clades. And you can see some examples of terrestrial eukaryote clades, some of which we'll be mentioning, some of which we won't, won't be on this slide here. So eukaryotes on land include creatures such as the arthropods shown on the top left here, uh, vertebrates, uh, tetrapods, um, also uh, 
there are a whole bunch of different kinds of worms on land. So annelids, that's an earthworm there. A group called the onocophorans or velvet worms are on land. We can see some examples of a, a nematode down here and also a nemertian, uh, a kind of a fairly uh, rare and unfamiliar kind of worm. And also an example of a rotifer here. These are really small creatures that we don't see around a lot. Um, another group of arthropods that is on land is the, um, the millipedes. There are gastropods on land. There are also cool little uh, little clades like the tardigrades that can live on land, as well as major clades such as the plants. So that's just a smattering, an overview of the diversity of different groups that have come onto land. And I think I'm right in saying that every single group that you can see here on this slide has come onto land independently of the other ones. So we're only gonna be looking at the terrestrialization of a limited number of the groups that you see here. So without further ado, let's go on to video number two and start looking at um, adaptations that we see in living groups to life on land. I'll see you there in a second.